guys, welcome back to our channel. Uh, tonight I am actually going to be making my famous vegetable beef soup. Um, it was requested by some of our followers or our subscribers. Um, one of those was Emily's Ideas, uh, which you can find her channel in the description below. Um, so tonight I'm just gonna basically walk you through how to make my vegetable beef soup. Um, it's famous within our family. It's a recipe that I've been using for the past 10 years or so, um, and it's become a family favorite. So here are all the ingredients. Um, first off, we're gonna start with about a pound of ground beef. You can use anywhere from one to two pounds, depending on how much um, or how many people you're gonna actually be feeding. We're only feeding uh, five of us, so only a pound will suffice. All right, so next we have our red potatoes. Uh, I chose red potatoes because they're my favorite type of potatoes. These are potatoes that I actually cook with on a regular basis. Um, I have my celery, green beans, an onion. I typically use about half of an onion, carrots, rotel, and tomato sauce. The rotel and the tomato sauce gives it a little extra flavor. Um, I'm actually changing it up a little bit this time. I'm using a vegetable gumbo blend. Um, it has a few different types of vegetables. So it has okra, corn, onion, celery, and red peppers. Um, in place of that, I actually typically use the veg all canned home style vegetables, which is typically um, canned potatoes, green beans, onions, um, and corn. So it, it's not too much different. This one actually has some peppers in it. So I am changing it up a little bit. If I'm feeling fancy, I may add a bag of corn as well. Now for the seasonings, I try not to use too much salt, but I do use our the Lowry seasoned salt, um, garlic salt to give it a little extra flavor, um, garlic powder, like I said, to kind of stay away from so much salt. Um, and then regular salt and pepper. I don't go too crazy with the seasonings. Um, every now and again, I'll add some cayenne pepper to it. But since we have two young kiddos um, and a, obviously a baby eating this food, um, I try to stay away from the cayenne or the chili powder that I used to put in it. First off, I'm gonna start with my ground beef. I typically will have it on a medium heat so that the meat doesn't cook too fast. Um, I, I typically like to put it on and I'll chop it up a little bit, season it, and um, you know, just kind of let it sit and simmer. Um, and it gives me time to cut up my vegetables. So basically what I'll do is I'll cook the meat um, so that I'm only using one pan um, and it makes it a lot simpler, a lot easier. Um, all I have to do is cook the meat, strain the meat, and then start putting all the vegetables in. Um, so yeah, here we go. So now what I'm going to end up doing is putting in these onions so that they can cook with the meat. Soak in some of that flavor. Gives them more of a crisp, sauteed feel. Um, I love sauteed onions or grilled onions, however you want to say it, cooked onions. Some of my absolute favorite. Um, I also have a recipe that I cook um, it's a country breakfast recipe. It's like a casserole. Um, I cook sausage and I also saute onions with the sausage. Um, it's amazing. Thank you. 
All right, so now, because potatoes take a little bit longer than most of the other stuff to cook, um, I actually start putting in the potatoes um, right after the meat and the onions are done cooking. That way it just gives it a little bit extra cook time before I put everything else in. Um, so while I'm cutting out the rest of the vegetables, I'm gonna let this kind of sit and simmer on, like I said, about medium heat. I guess it's not actually like simmering, but it's cooking, getting some uh, heat to the potatoes so it can start softening them up so that they'll be ready for the soup. Because after I put all the vegetables in, uh, I'll start adding in like the water, um, just making it perfecto. All right, so now I'm giving it a good stir. I already put some of the celery in there just because I couldn't fit it all on the cutting board, but now I'm gonna put the celery in. You see it's chopped up nice and fairly thin. Try to make everything about the same size just so that it cooks evenly. It's already looking delicious. Oh, it smells so good. Um, you don't have to put all the vegetables that I'm putting in here. This is just what I've done, like I said earlier, for about 10 years now or more. Um, I like celery, potatoes, onions. Um, I'm a big fan. Way back when I first started making this, I actually used to use nothing but canned vegetables. So I did like canned green beans, canned potatoes, canned corn, the veg all. Um, the Rotel and the tomato sauce um, but now as you know it's progressed throughout the years try to use as little can um, canned goods as possible uh, more of the fresh and frozen just to get it actually gives it a lot more flavor um, so if you like fresh produce give it a thumbs up tell us what your favorite vegetable is in the comments below um, like I said you can really can't go wrong with this you can put any kind of vegetable that you want in it um, so yeah, here we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in the green beans. I got a bag of fresh green, green beans. I say fresh. I mean, it's still better than canned. All right. So like I said, here it is. This is the first time I'm using a vegetable gumbo blend. So we'll see how this goes with, on, uh, Saturday we went to a friend's house and uh, had crawfish boil and one of their friends actually made um, homemade gumbo and it was amazing so I love, love some gumbo vegetables I know they're nothing nothing special but uh, you know it's gonna add a little bit of a different flavor profile to this um, vegetable soup I've never had okra in it before or added uh, bell peppers or anything like that so we'll see how this goes um you know honestly i normally add carrots i think i'm gonna skip out on the carrots this time um looks like there's quite a bit of vegetables in there um that added like i said it added some complexity to the to the mash up here <laughs> sauce. Now I'm going to add some water to it uh, because it is a soup. What normally happens is if I add, if I don't add enough water to it, it happens sometimes unfortunately. Um, 
I mean, I say unfortunately, it's still good, um, but it ends up turning more into like a goulash instead of an actual soup. Um, so you can do it either way. Um, if you prefer less liquid in your, um, you know, vegetable beef soup, then more power to you. So I'll post the recipe in our blog, uh, which the link is down below. Um, and I'll, I'll make sure that I post my original recipe so that you can see how to make it from scratch, um, start to finish. There we go. Might want to add a little bit more liquid to it. Um, now at this point is when I'm going to start seasoning up. <clears throat> So now at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually kick it up a notch, um, turn it up to about almost to the high heat. Make sure the heat stays contained. Um, and it starts to cook all the vegetables through and through, especially those potatoes and the celery. Um, I do like to have a little bit of a crunch with my celery, um, but potatoes, I like them to be nice and soft. So anyways, this is my recipe. Now we're gonna let it sit and cook for about uh, we give it about 20 minutes, but we do let it sit for sit and cool for a little bit. Um, and I'll show you the end product here soon. All right, so turned down the heat quite a bit. It's still actually boiling, even though I've turned down the heat already. Um, so you can see the finished product here. I've let it cook for about 20, 25 minutes. Um, it got to a nice boiling point, kept it at the boiling for like I said, um, about 20 or 25 minutes. Um, so my potatoes are nice and cooked. As you all already know, like the rest of the vegetables don't take too long to cook. Um, so here we are. This is our delicious soup. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour up our bowls. So what we actually do now, at, after we've poured up our bowls and everything's looking fantastic and delicious, go ahead and top it off with some shredded cheese. We like the Colby Jack or the Mexican style cheese. That's what we typically keep in the house for tacos um, or any other amazing dishes. This is the final product. Bon appetit. Enjoy. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Tell me down in the comments below what kind of recipes you would like to see from me um, or tell me what your favorite recipe is. Um, and don't forget to go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you get notifications every time we post. Thanks.